Hi, and welcome to this LMN webinar on building budgets and estimates for snow and ice work. Here in this webinar, we're going to take you through the process of budgeting and estimating from snow and ice, right from building your budget through to the equipment catalog and some work area templates, and then finally putting together some estimates for snow. Let's start with the snow budget, though. Some companies aren't even in need to build their own snow budget. If snow is a small operation for you, you may find it just as easy to wrap it up in all your other divisions. As you get larger and as you grow your divisions, you start wanting to see which ones are making money and which ones are not making money. And at that point, it might make sense to build a snow budget on its own. But even then, there's circumstances where that doesn't make sense. Sometimes you'll find that you make not very much money in the summer cutting grass and you make your money back when you're plowing snow in the winter. And so you kind of need a 12 month contract to be profitable and it can be, but you need both services to get it there. When the circumstances look like that, it might not even make sense for you to build a snow budget. If you tried to build a lawn maintenance budget on its own, it would look unprofitable. And to get it profitable, you might have to charge more than your market will even allow. And on the other hand, in the snow budget, it might tell you to charge less. And while that's good in theory, we have to compete in real life and it might make sense for you to just say, we're going to take summer as a lost leader and make our money back in snow. We're not saying that's right, but it is common in this industry and it's worth noting because if you try to look at them both separately, you might find out that they're not always both going to be profitable. But for those companies that want to try building a snow budget on its own, we're going to take you through the steps here. First of all, you might be wondering why you'd build a snow budget. And number one, we can set profitable sales goals. Number two, we can look at the cost of snow equipment on its own and the stuff that we share with other divisions and make sure that each division is recovering its fair share of equipment costs. And that's really important if you're buying equipment specifically for snow only. We can also make sure that your snow pricing has fair overhead recovery built into the estimates and you're gonna need a snow budget to do that. And ultimately we'll make sure that your prices and your estimate are accurate by having its own budget to base its costs, overhead recovery, and profit off of. I'm going to jump right into the budget now and actually look at a sales budget for snow. Now, if you're going to build a snow budget, the only sales that you want to include in your snow sales budget are the sales that came from snow and ice work. So on the sample here, I've got some snow and ice uh, removals and relocates if we do that extra and some snow and ice sub sales, which is subcontracted sales. You don't have to break your things out into three categories. You can lump them all under one as snow sales, or you could choose different categories. You might look at snow and ice commercial versus snow and ice residential. Lots of companies look at snow and ice contract work versus snow and ice uh, per push or time and materials work. Another good way to look at it so you can make sure you've got a balance. However way you do it is fine. Just make sure that the total of your sales budget equals just the total amount of sales you're going to do in snow and ice. Moving ahead to your field labor budget, you're only going to want to include the hours worked in your snow. So if your snow sales includes just the revenue earned from snow, then you're going to want to make sure your snow labor budget includes just the hours worked in snow. Some of you may be able to pull that information very easily. Others may have to guess a little bit. For instance, you could took a payroll report from December 15th to March 15th and get an approximation of how many hours you paid out during that period. Substitute your dates for whatever works in your area. What I do want to make sure though is that I only have field staff in my budget and I'm only including the hours worked in the snow season. I don't like to put all my employees in individually. I like to break them down into roles. So for example on the screen here you can see I've got snowplow operators. It's the second one in that list. I've got 1,100 hours per year. That doesn't mean I'm doing 1,100 hours per employee just in snow. That'd be a really long snow season. What it means is I've got five snow operators and they're going to each work approximately 220 hours in a snow season. So if I took five operators and did 220 hours each, that's where I got that 1,100 hours per year. And then the hourly rate is just the average wage per hour I'm going to pay the snow operator. So 1,100 hours at 20 bucks an hour is going to give me a $22,000 budgeted wage. And that would be the wage I'm going to budget for all my snowplow operators, which in this budget is five. And I did the same thing for snow equipment operators and laborers, just with a different number of employees. 
Now you can put them in individually. It just takes longer to do it that way. Next up is equipment for snow. A couple of things you have to remember here. When you're budgeting equipment for snow, you're not gonna to wanna to put your fuel repairs and insurance totals for the year in here, that's too much. You only want to include a portion of your fuels, repairs, and insurance. For many of you, snow is going to be about one third of the year, four out of 12 months. So it might make sense for you to say, I'm going to take one third of my total fuel, repairs, and insurance and put it into snow. Others take it a step further and realize, well, snow is even harder on the equipment and it burns more fuel per hour. So I'm going to take that first third or the 33% of my fuel, repairs, and insurance and bump it up. Maybe you'll put 40% of your fuel repairs and insurance because snow is harder on everything. However you choose to do it, it's up to you. Just make sure you don't take your whole totals. You're only looking at the portion that applies to snow when you're building a snow budget. The next two things we're going to look at is the equipment that you're going to put in the return on investment section. So I'm going to show you some examples in a second, but I just want you to make sure that when you do snow only equipment, it should be allocated 100% to snow. So if I had, for example, a snow plow, I want to make sure the entire return on investment or depreciation of that snow plow goes to my snow budget because that's the only place I'm going to use it. But other things like a pickup truck where you would use it in snow and maybe you're also going to use it in the summer, that we can split. And you want to make sure you split it to do it accurately. So let's take a look at how we would do that. Here I've got my equipment budget up for my snow. And for example, let's take a look at how to do something that's entirely allocated to snow. I might do a snow plow, for instance. Go over here and click the Add New button and put in Snow Plow. Now, when I say snow plow, I'm just referring to the actual plow itself. Monthly payment or ROI. If you have a lease on this thing, great, you can put it in. But if you bought it, like many people do, you're going to want to click the calculator. Now, enter the cost of the plow. For example, if I pay $7,500 for my plow, that's what I'll put in here. Remember, it's the cost to replace it, not necessarily what it's worth today. Number of years you expect to own or use it. Let's say we'll keep our plows for eight years and the value at the end of its life. We'll say it's worth nothing. It's a snow plow. When it's done, we're going to throw it, get maybe some scrap metal for it and buy a new one. Enter the number of months per, use it, per year that you use it. We'll say snow is four months a year. So I want to make sure this number of months per year I use it and this, if it's a divisional budget, makes, uh, adds up as four and four, that they're equal. They add up to one another. That's basically saying I only use this plow four months a year and it works a full four months a year in the budget I'm building here. And if you add 1% for inflation down here, I'm going to come up with a total monthly ROI for 8460. That's how much per month I need to recover so that seven years or I'm sorry, eight years from now, I can afford to go buy or replace that current snow plow. Now, if you're going to do a truck, it might work differently. I'm going to enter a pickup truck in here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click the calculator, but here I'm going to use numbers that apply to a pickup truck. So let's say our trucks get replaced at $40,000 each. Uh, we keep our trucks for seven years and after seven years, they're worth $6,500. Here's where you need to pay attention. Number of months per year that you use it, and if this is a divisional budget, and to the number of months this equipment works in this division. Now, in the case of a pickup truck that I use all year, and I'm just trying to allocate some to snow, I need to do this carefully. You're gonna keep this here, number of months per year you use it, at 12. I'm gonna use it all year. But I'm building a snow budget, so I'm gonna say it only works in this budget for those 12 months. And what it's gonna do is take a portion of the ROI. Notice that if I did 12 and 12, it's just about $400 a month. That's the full replacement value of the truck. If I go four and 12, this drops down from 400 down to 132. And what 132 is, is in this case, it's one third of the truck's replacement value per month. So one third of the value per month that we need to build up to replace it needs to go to snow. The other two thirds is going to go to your maintenance budget, your construction budget, or whatever this truck is doing for the other eight months of the year. So if you have shared equipment like trucks, or skid steers, or loaders that work in other divisions, make sure that you're adjusting those fields. One should read 12 months or however many months your season is, and the other one should read just the amount it works in snow. Next up is your material budget. This one's really easy. Here you're gonna put in your budget for salt or whatever de-icing materials you use. 
Maybe if you estimate stakes, you could include that as well. But generally in snow and ice, salt and de-icing materials, the only material we deal with. Now, the easiest way to budget for your materials is sort of look at what you spent last year on materials versus what you sold in snow last year. Divide the material cost by the sales to get the percent of sales that you spent on materials. So you might do the numbers and find out that last year you spent 20% of your sales on salt and de-icing materials. Well, when you're building a budget this year, 20% of whatever this sales goal is, is probably a reasonable guess of how much you're going to spend on salt and de-icer. Of course, weather may change that. The type of events we get can fluctuate wildly how much salt we need. But the best way to do it is to start building up a history of what your material percentage is and use that going forward to do your forecasts. After that, you want to put together your subcontracting budget. And this is simply what you're going to spend on subcontractors if you use them for your snow operations. Now, if you're going to put your snow subcontractors in here, also make sure that you included any revenue earned from these contracts in your sales budget. If you didn't include their revenue in your sales budget, then you shouldn't include the subcontractor expenses here. Generally, you would include both. After this, we're going to look at overhead for snow. Now, this is probably the trickiest part of this budget. How much overhead do you put in your snow budget? Well, you want to make sure that you're splitting your overhead across your divisions if you're building a snow budget. You don't want to put all your overhead in here. That's going to be way too much. You're only going to put a portion of. So some companies might say, well, we do snow for one third of the year. So I'm going to put one third of my overhead in there. Makes sense. Might not be entirely accurate. There may be roles like a landscape designer that uh, doesn't work in the winter. Wouldn't make any sense to have any other salary in your snow budget, but it's a way of doing it quickly. Other companies do it by percentage of revenue. So if your snow operations was 50% of your revenue, you might put 50% of your overhead in here. It's one another way to look at it. Again, not necessarily accurate. If you had a, a really heavy snow year and lots of revenue, it doesn't necessarily mean your overhead changed and went up, um, but it's a way of getting an approximation. I like to be as realistic as possible. I like to sort of go through each expense and for things like rent, uh, it makes a lot of sense to do, say, one third of rent would go to snow because it's about a third of the year. On other things, it makes uh, no sense to do that. When you're looking at costs like advertising um, or roles in the office that may not work, like a landscape designer in the winter. Uh, and you may have other things like GPS that you only have because you do snow. And in that sense, I like to put all those costs, for instance, in the GPS or none of those costs, like the landscape designer salary, into the snow budget so I get a really accurate budget for each division. If you consult our help video on learnlmn.com, there's a spreadsheet you can download. It's called Overhead Cost Splitting Spreadsheet and that'll allow you to help put your overhead expenses in there and split them by division. What you want to end up with then is an overhead budget that's got snow's share of all your overhead costs. So for example, if you can look down at the wages section, I've included four months of owner an office manager and mechanic. And up in the expenses section, I've included a portion of rent and a portion of advertising and a portion of association dues, etc. Not necessarily all of it, but the amount that I've decided should be allocated to snow. When you're done that, you've got your snow budget finished. You've got a snow profit and loss. So start by making sure that your snow operations are tuned to be profitable. If it's not profitable, then you can look at a couple of things. Number one, you might need to increase your sales goals in snow. Sometimes this means doing more work. Sometimes it means charging more. Lots of companies don't charge enough for their equipment, for instance. And it may be telling you that, yeah, based on your expenses, you need to charge more to make a profit. Uh, also, double check your hours and expenses. Maybe that in separating your divisions that you've counted something twice or you put too much of something in there. So go through again if you're not profitable and have a look at your field labor hours. Make sure it's just the hours for snow. Go through your equipment. Make sure you're only taking a portion of equipment that you use 12 months a year and just that portion is going into your snow budget. Oftentimes it can just be a simple error that's causing you not to look profitable. Finally, you might have too much overhead in snow and a good way of looking at this is your overhead percentage. If you're over 30%, it's telling you you're pretty overhead heavy in snow and you'll probably find it's going to get tough to compete on price. If you're over, say, 40%, you're going to find it very difficult to compete on price. Your markups are going to be too high. And what that's telling you is you're trying to put too much overhead on snow. 
And there's two ways to fix that. You can either reduce overhead, uh, you could cut costs, or you could put some of that overhead into the other divisions, or you need to sell more work to spread that overhead out thinner. As for overhead recovery methods for snow, same three that we always look at in the budget, the multiple, the field labor, and the single, uh, the average ranges look like this. For multiple overhead, snow companies typically use something that looks like this. Labor is usually 50 to 90. If it's lower, great, your overhead's pretty lean. If it's higher than 90, you might start to worry that your prices are going to get expensive. Equipment's at 25%. Lots of snow companies are pretty heavy on equipment, so we want to make sure we get overhead recovery there. Materials is a little higher than some are on the average. You can leave yours at 10, but people can get good markups on salt. So oftentimes salt gets marked up by 20% for overhead recovery and then whatever you want for profit. Subs, same thing, a little bit higher than the usual 5%, but again, that's up to you. You can use whatever you want. Field labor hour method typically is between $15 and $25 an hour for a snow company. And the SOARS multipliers are usually between 25 and 40%. Now that's not to say your numbers have to be here. If they're lower or higher, you can still make it work. We're just giving you the industry averages and ranges. If you are too high, you're probably going to want to find a way to bring it down in order to remain competitive. Let's look at setting up snow equipment now. This is, we're going to jump now from building a budget. We're going to assume your budget's done. And we're going to jump right to the estimating catalog now. Lots of companies have trouble putting together uh, snow for their snow division uh, because they don't enter the, the information right. So let's take a look at how to do that. I'm going to jump into the equipment catalog for snow and here's what I want you to remember. When you're doing something like a plow truck uh, and anything goes like this too, if, if it's a skid steer with a plow on it or a loader with a plow on it, if you can use that truck all year but in the winter it pushes snow, I want to make sure that I'm not trying to recover all the expenses for the truck just in my snow hours. That makes sense for the plow, but certainly not for the truck. So in order to fix this or do it right, here's what you're gonna to wanna to do. Start with your crew truck with no plow or equipment and just work that out. So if I flip over to my equipment catalog here, I'm gonna go into equipment and here I'm gonna look at a crew truck. Now what I've done here is I've just built a crew truck standalone. And if I look at the expenses, it's my billable hours per year, which is basically a whole season, 1,750 hours or 1,800 or 2,000 hours, whatever you determine a season is. Then here I've got my cost to replace the truck, the year's life, the resale value at the end, and what I'm gonna spend on maintenance, insurance, licensing, and fuel. But again, all these costs are spread out over the whole year, because I'm assuming we're gonna be able to use this truck all year. The hourly cost at the bottom is 687. So once you've got that for your truck, save it. And now you've got your crew truck standalone saved. Next thing you want to do is jump over and figure out a plow. So we finished the first three steps here. We started with a crew truck, we spread the truck over the full year, and we remember the cost per hour, $6.87. Now I want to work out what my plow costs are. So back to LMN, I'm going to save this one, and I'm going to create another equipment item just for the snow plow. Now this is no truck, just the plow itself. And if I click the calculator, here's what I did. Billable hours, in this case very small, maybe 150. Just the hours from snow. Cost of the plow, how many years we're gonna keep the plow, what it's worth at the end, and some maintenance repair. Now remember, a plow is not gonna need a license, it's not gonna burn any fuel by itself, I'm just talking about the snow plow here. And now I get a number that says $7.61. So I've got, and I'm gonna hit okay there, I've got the cost for the plow, 761, the cost for the truck, 687. The way to work out a snow plow and, uh, and truck is to then add a new item, call it crew truck with snow plow, for instance, and in the cost per hour, add those two numbers that you just worked out separately together. So if it was 687, I'll pull up a quick calculator here. If it was $6.87 for the truck and $7.41 for the plow, my total is $14.28. So what I'm going to do is take $14.28 and just type it right in here. You don't need to do the calculator again. You already did the calculator for the truck and the calculator for the plow. And now you've got a good rate. That includes the truck spread out over all year and the plow just in your snow hours. 
Now, if you had a salter on the truck, you'd do the same thing, but you'd include the salter in there as well. Now let's take a look at work area templates. We're going to skip past setting up your labor and materials in snow, assuming that that's pretty straightforward. You're just going to set up your crews and your materials as per your cost. Templates can come in a lot of handy when you're estimating snow. And here, for example, I've, I've built a snow plow template. Now in my snow plow template, I've got a crew that's a snow plow operator. I've got my crew truck with plow and salter, and then I've got salt bulk rock and salt bagged in case the driver needs to spread some salt on the walks as well. Now the best thing to do is before you put together your templates, try to establish some production metrics. And maybe you've done this and maybe not. But here I've got a simple spreadsheet that gives my estimators an idea how long it takes to do certain things. For instance, with a pickup truck and snow plow. In an average snow, in an average lot, I'm going to estimate that our truck can clear about 0.8 acres per hour. And in a light snow in an easy lot, it's 1.3. In a heavy snow in a hard lot, it's 0.4. So A, B, C being easy, medium, and hard lot. And I've got different production metrics for a pickup truck, a skid steer, a backhoe, loader, and then some sidewalks. Starting from this spreadsheet, you can bring those production metrics into your template. So for instance, if I click this calculator here beside the crew or the snowplow operator, I can set up a ratio that says it takes one hour to plow 0.8 acres based on an average snowfall. And again, this is an average lot template. The truck's going to be the same. It's going to be one hour per 0.8 acres for because for however long the labor is there, in this case, the truck's going to need to be there as well. Then you've got salt and you can set up your ratio for salt. So actually this should be maybe one ton for every two acres, which is going to mean I do about it should be obvious that you're going to replace your production metrics uh, with your own, not use the ones we're giving here. The point of this video is not to give you the right production metrics. It's simply to show you how it's supposed to work with some sample, somewhat realistic production metrics. If you're looking for snow production metrics, uh, associations like SIMA give them out to their members on their website. So you can have a look there as a resource. Well, once I've built these ratios, in, this, in the case of snow, how long it takes to plow an acre and how much salt I need to put down on an acre, and for bag salt, how many bags per square foot, what you've essentially done is built your estimator, a turnkey estimating system for uh, estimating snow and ice. So we're going to go here and we're going to look at building a snow and ice estimate. First thing that's important, make sure you use service estimates, not standard. Standard estimates are more for construction work. Service estimates will have the options you need for snow, like do I build this by season or per visit. Start your estimate by entering your client name and their address, and then get to the estimating screen. There's a really handy tool here if you've never used it called Measure. It's a button right beside the address. And if you click that button, it's going to bring up a map of the address that you just entered. To measure a site area, just go around and click the area. You can drop points anywhere your hand clicks. And then you should end up with an area that you can get an aerial measurement of. If you find yourself unable to click inside the measured area, just simply drag and drop your points around. And each time you drop a point, new ones will get added. So you can get really precise with your measurements. In this case here, you can see I've measured an area to 0 0.063 acres, and you can get as detailed as you want. If I needed to add more area, you can do clear area, clear it all, and then start your next measurement again. And there you can see, I can see that acre is 0.2, or that area is 0.29 acres, and I'll hit clear area, and I could measure this entrance way around here till I was done the entire property. Once you've got your acreage, go back to your estimate, scroll down here, and we'll build a very simple estimate. I'm going to go add service and we're going to count this one as per push. Let's just figure out in an average snowfall what it's going to cost to push. So I'm going to call this an average plow per push. The number of visits is going to be one because we're just talking about a per push price. And I'm going to change the build as to uh, per visit. Actually, we don't even need the per push in the name. We'll just call this an average plow or an average event plow. Click OK. Now you've created your service area for average plow. 
Now you can add labor, add equipment, add materials separately, you add your crew, add your equipment, add your salt. But if you've built your templates, you just go add template. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go to that snowplow temperate average lot. And I'm going to add it here. Now, instead of working these things out by themselves, the estimator should be able to now just click the calculator and say this property is, and let's say that property I just me measured was uh, 0.9 acres. So they're going to type in 0.9 acres. When they tab off that, you'll see it'll automatically calculate that this should take 1.125 hours. We're going to round it up to 1.2 for estimating. Now, if my plow driver's there for 1.2, I know my, crew, my truck is going to be there 1.2, so I'll put that in there as well. And now I got to work out how much salt. Again, click the calculator, put in 1.2, and it'll calculate how many tons of salt we need based on those ratios that we put in the template. That's where we put in the 0.8 acres, or I'm sorry, point, uh, yeah, we can do in one hour 0.8 acres, and it's going to take half a ton of salt per acre. That's where these calculations are coming from. Now, if there was a walkway area, I'm going to click the bag salt and put it's a 2,300 square feet of walks and it would tell me I'm going to need uh, about half a bag there. Now remember, if you're doing walks, you're going to need to add more time here as well because the driver is going to take some time to put the salt down on the walks. And you could build a calculator for that, or in this case, I'm just going to add uh, 10 or 15 minutes to put salt down in the walks. So click OK, and what you'll have now is a cost per visit. At this property, it's going to cost a total of $149.13 for us to just go there and do the work. The break even with overhead recovery is $198. And the price that I want to charge to make a 21% profit and the profits coming from your budget means I need to charge this plow out at $253.24. So that's one way to build an estimate. There's a very simple per push price. Lots of companies though say, well, that's a two to four inch push. What about a four to six inch push? So what you might do is change the name here from plow from average plow to plow two to four inch. So now I've got the price for my two to four inch push. To make a four to six inch push, here's an easy way to do that. Go action and go copy. Now call this one plow four to six inch. And hit okay. And what it's gonna do is just create an exact copy of the two to, two to uh, four inch. So you'll notice that the exact same cost and the exact same price up here. What I need to do, though, is just change the amount of time it's going to take a four to six. Now, there is two ways to calculate how much time it should take the four to six inch plow. You could build templates that would say, for example, uh, you could have a two to four inch template. So you could say at two to four inch, we can do 0.8 acres per hour. But on a four to six inch, it might only be 0.6 acres per hour. And on a six to eight inch, it might be 0 four or five acres per hour. So you could build up templates that way, each one with their own ratios. And then instead of doing what I did here with the copy, I would just create a new one, add the template, this time adding the four to six inch template and do my calculations. If you have a pretty simple way of increasing the time based on the event, you might prefer to do that as well. You might prefer to do the second option, which is basically just copy the two to four inch, make a four to six inch like I've done here, and then just up these hours. If it was an hour and a half for two to four, maybe it's 1.75 hours. Maybe you've got some metric that says add 25% or whatever your number is to the time to get the right price for the one point uh, for the four to six. Uh, salt really shouldn't change until you maybe get into the really heavy events and drivers tend to put more salt down to help them clean it up. So there's my four to six. And if I wanted to do a six to eight, again, I'll do it the simple way without building another template. Um, I'm just going to go action and copy and call this one plow and this would be six to eight inch and hit OK. And now that's done. And again, all I need to do is increase these hours. So let's say it's six to eight, takes a little bit more time because there's more piling, etc. involved. I'm going to go up to 2.1 hours and I'll leave this salt the same. And then again, we could do this one more time. Copy, we'll call this one plow. Uh, eight plus inches and we'll go okay and this time with the eight plus it's going to take a lot more time we're going to set this up to three hours here uh, maybe even up the tonnage of salt a bit because we're probably going to end up putting more salt down just to help us clean up the uh, the stuff that gets left in between plow runs etc 
So there you have it. Now I, this is how you, one way to end up with a two to four, four to six, six to eight and an eight inch plus. If you'd built another template, I'll show you how to do that right now quickly with the four to six inch. I'll, I'll delete these and go back to the two to four the way I had it. If you wanna do it via a template, then what you could do is create a template with, instead of 0.8 acres per hour, it's probably gonna be less. Instead of copying it, I'm just gonna go add service again. I'm gonna go plow, this time four to six inches and hit okay. And I'm gonna go add template. And this time what you wanna do is find your template with more snow for instance. So I could have a snow plow template called uh, six, four to six inch or hard lot or you know more than average snow, whatever you wanna call it. We'll add it in there. This time, instead of being one hour per 0.8 acres, it's one hour per 0.5 acres. We can do less acres in an hour. Again, you're gonna put your um, acres in there. Mine was 1.2, so this tells me it's gonna be 2.4. So I put that in there, it's still gonna be half a ton. And we'll get that in there. So that's the other way to build it. The other way, instead of copying it, is you can have a, another template for a deeper depth and just start slowing down those times until you get to your uh, maximum threshold. And at that time you can go to time and materials or whatever you do. Now that's how to set up a per visit plow. Now I've got a price per push for those different depths. If you wanna come up with a seasonal rate, you just need to do two things. Number one, change the build as per two per season. And number two, change the visits to however many times you think you're gonna go based on an average year. So when you're trying to come up with a seasonal price, all you're really doing is guessing how many times we're gonna go this year. And so if you think we do, I don't know, uh, 12 events of two to four inches and maybe six events of four to six inches, I'm gonna set these two as per season and I'm gonna set my visits at 12 and six for each one respectively. And what it's going to do is come up with a contract seasonal value over say four payments that's going to give us a total payment amount per month so what we're looking at here is once you do this 12 and 6 you slide over here to see okay my seasonal price for these different plows are this now you might be looking at this and saying well what about salt only we've got some plows in here but what if we're just going to go and just put down salt by itself well there's an easy way to do that too First of all, I'm just gonna jump back to our work area templates and show you what a salt only template might look like. So just like our other ones, we've got snowplow template, average lot, easy lot, hard lot, whatever here, I'm gonna to go to salt only. Now, if I'm plowing or I'm just, sorry, if I'm just doing salt only, your components in here are basically gonna be the same as you're plowing. You're still gonna need a snowplow driver and a salt truck at least. It might still be a plow truck with a salter on it. Could be a dedicated salt truck. It's up to you what piece of equipment. But you're still gonna need a person. You're gonna need equipment and you're gonna need salt. The only thing that's really gonna differ is the rates that it's gonna be applied to. So instead of being, for example, 0.8 hours per acre, when we're only salting, in one hour, we could do maybe four acres, and maybe you could do six or 80, whatever your number is. This case is gonna say, it takes us about 15 minutes to salt a, a one acre lot, which is sort of what I'm going on here. So I set the labor up one hour per uh, four acres. I set the truck up with one hour per four acres, and the salt exactly the same as the other ones, one ton for two acres. And I've also got my bag salt set up, one bag for 8,000 square feet. So now I've got a salt only template. So when I'm estimating snow and I wanna come up with a salting only price, I'm gonna use that template. So again, back down here, we're gonna go add service. And this time we're gonna call it salt app only. I'll leave the number of visits and build as per visit, just one and per visit for now. Let's work out what it's gonna price per app. Go okay. And now, um, I could add labor equipment materials, do it all manually for jobs that you want to do it manually. But if you have templates, it's certainly faster. Add template. I'm going to pick my salt application only template and I'm going to put in my size. And this property, if you can remember before, was 1.2 acres. So I'm going to put 1.2 acres in the calculator there. And it tells me I'm going to need about 0.3 hours for uh, labor and equipment. Uh, the salt itself is going to be the exact same as my other applications, uh, about 0.75 tons. And if it was uh, 1,800 square feet or whatever it was here, it was 0.2. I think I did more. I think it was 0.5 bags before. So I'll leave it at that. So I'll hit OK. And now I've got a price per application of salt. It's going to cost me $86 to apply salt. My price per visit should be $130 with 
my profit margin. If I was going to do a, a job where the plowing was contract price, but the salt was extra, then what I have here is perfect. I've got the plows at per season with the number of plows that I guess I'm going to do. So you can see here my contract seasonal value is 4,900, but my salt is billed per visit. So that I'm going to leave it like this. Salt app per visit. Each visit is going to be $130 or whatever I want to use it as for, for salting. Now, if you have a uh, if you have a contract that you want to do it all inclusive, so you want to do a per season price for your entire contract, all I need to do is flip this salt per season and guess how many times I'm going to go and just salt the property. And if I can guess that's 25 times, and of course your area will impact that. If I guess it's 25 times, then it's going to give me a price uh, for the season, including 25 saltings. So there's in a nutshell how to do estimates of per push and how to estimate per season and how to do salt with extra and salt included in your contract. The only thing I really haven't talked about here is walkways and walkways are no different than putting a plow together. We would add a service, put together a walkway crew and salt. And again, if you build a template for your walkway crews, then you've got uh, another thing you can use for uh, quickly building an estimate for that. So for example here, I believe I have any, yeah, snow blowing and salting with walks. So I open this template. This, this might be what a sidewalk crew's uh, template looks like. I've got a sidewalk crew and a snowblower. What this is going to do is help me estimate the time to snow blow the walks. So I'm going to say each man hour, we can do about 3,000 square feet when we're snow blowing. Same thing with the snowblower, one, one hour per 3,000 square feet. So I've got crew and equipment time. And then here I've got time to salt it. So I've got one hour per 20,000 square feet and I've got one bag per 6,000 square feet for my bag metric. So again, if I was to use this template in an estimate, and I can just show you that very quickly. Now let's add our uh, walks template to, uh, to this job here. We're going to go add service. And this time I'm going to create a service name called walkway uh, clearing and salting. We're going to use the visits as one. We're going to set the build as to per visit. Now again, I'm going to add my template. This time I'm going to use my walkway template. And I need to do my calculations again. So I'm going to click the calculator and let's say there's 2,200 square feet of walks at this property. It calculates the amount of time to snowblower it. So if the crew was 0.8, the snowblower is going to be 0.8. And then I'm going to do time to salt it. Take 0.2 hours and the amount of salt that I'm going to need. 0.5 bags and there I've got a price to clear and salt the walkways. If I wanted to do walkway clearing and or walkway salting only, really simple from here. So you can just go action, copy, call this one walkway salting only. Hit OK. And just take out the time. You can delete these entirely if you want, but just take out the time for snow blowing and just leave the salting in there. And of course, I can do whatever I want now to the price. I may want to charge, if we're going to go do salting, I, I may want to charge them more just because we can or because there's more mobilization involved. And you can do all your tweaks to pricing. And maybe I want to make a 30% profit margin on this. Do all your tweaks to your cost and profit here. But ultimately, I have now a price per visit for clearing and salting and a price per visit for salting only. And if I wanted to make those part of the contract, like I did with the other ones, I just go per season, and then I'm going to guesstimate the number of visits we're going to do per season. And in a nutshell, that's how to budget and build some of your estimating catalog and build some pricing for snow and ice work. That's estimating is all driven from the budget that you put together in step one and to make sure that you've got the right cost and overhead recovery and profit margin on everything. And if you use templates, you can help your estimators make sure they write, they have the right quantities when you're estimating uh, by putting in your production metrics in the work area templates and having them use that to price your snow and ice jobs. Just remember to be careful looking at per visit and per season. Make sure you've got your settings correct. And I can just about guarantee you'll have a more profitable, more consistent snow year because your estimates are done correctly from estimator to estimator and it all ties back to your company budget. If you have any questions about anything you saw in this webinar or video, feel free to email us at support at goelmn.com 
and we'll get back to you with some answers for your questions. And if you're looking for some training, it could be a workshop in your area. It could be a free boot camp. We host those uh, regularly back at our office in, in Toronto. Uh, there's no charge for this event. You can come up anytime. It's event, uh, members only, and it's a much smaller class. Just have to get yourself there. Or if you just want to see a schedule for other webinars, go to www.golmn.com events to see our calendar.